it's a very exciting time for us because with the Internet of Things, with the industrial Internet of Things, connectivity has changed and evolved. We're, it, it's allowing us to connect to things that we could not do before. And we're using the intelligence of our software, our connectivity software, to bring more information that wasn't accessible because now there's more context in those devices, especially those devices that are non-traditional, which can be out there in the field somewhere. And now because of the wireless networks, because of the cellular networks, or because of the cloud, we have access to that information that was never being able to be accessed before. And uh, our software is ready to connect to all, the, all those devices. We're expanding our connectivity suite to do all that. The, and the interesting thing there is this, there's two approaches to it. There's the, the view that IoT is the, the gathering of data and harvesting of that data and doing data analytics, which is what we've done as a company very well for years. There's also the, the ability to configure these devices in some cases, right? Because IoT is a very loose term. So if we can, if we can if we configure that end device, that end device needs to be maintained, right? So the more devices we put in the system that need to be configured and maintained, the bigger the configuration requirement becomes. So part of our focus is not just on the gathering of the data, but it's also on how we can configure these edge devices and maintain them as a, as a, as a single sort of system. So as these things grow in number, the complexity of a system actually grows. So it's our responsibility to reduce that complexity for our end users, to, to put the simplicity of InTouch back into IoT. I think all that's going to drive a lot of uh, adoption of different types of devices. Traditionally, many, many years ago, it may have been just a, some kind of a control device, a, PBL, a PLC connects into the system. But now these independent devices are going to connect. They're not going to have to go through some gateway to aggregate all that information. They're going to be able to connect directly themselves, which will make it uh, important for us to be able to not just be able to connect to it, but be able to connect to it very easily without, a, without, without effort. Because that way, now if we're talking about instead of, you know, one, two, three, four, or ten things we're connecting, or we're just talking might be hundreds or even thousands, the amount of work to connect them together has to be negligible. Yeah. Right, and, and, and we can't just sort of stick with this traditional narrow scope of IoT gathering data. And this is where our products are, uh, are really powerful. It's also the ability to provide data back to those IoT devices. It's, it's not just a one-way street, and the focus is often just the one-way street, right? Yeah. So we need to be able to send down configuration we need to be able to have the device harvest the data that we've collected from all the devices so that the device itself can make decisions. And I think that's where we, we're the strong player in that game. Well, the role that the Internet of Things will play in the larger industry, I think, is going to really change the way people have interacted with systems. I mean, traditionally, in, in the area that I, you know, I've been working in, it was a human-machine interface or supervisor control. Very often, it's been so focused on that aspect of human-machine interface, where we're actually been pilot device replacement. And so instead of putting buttons and lights and switches, you had computers that did these. But it really was mostly inclusive of just controlling that ed, or that con controlling the, the hardware that it was connecting to. But now we see that this is going to be branching out into way many more things and so the Internet of Things is not just talking about people and machines but it's going to be talking about people and people, machines to machines, people to systems, systems to machines and it's going to be much more inclusive of that and it's going to branch out to create a fundamentally a whole new way of operating businesses. Right and as part of that uh, there's going to be an information explosion right because all those devices are now much more readily accessible not only from a uh, geographical distributed uh, point, but also from a price point. These sensors, the technology now in these sensors are, is very affordable, such that all these smart devices can be installed and present anywhere. And with that comes much more value of information, not just a pressure sensor, but the pressure sensor and it's coming from a place, a location, maybe even a person. All this information is accessible to us and we can leverage that today. I think this is a this is a surprising um, question. The, we see some customers using IoT, but they don't call it IoT, right? You don't go out and buy a piece of it. You you have a need to, to do something, and you find the best solution to do that task. So recently, we were with a, a large mining customer that had Raspberry Pi devices in their mobile assets. And who would know, right? We, they don't advertise that. You wouldn't know. And they don't call it IoT. It's, it's just a device that they're using to monitor and, and aggregate data that they can then bring back into their control system. So I think 
it, it, it's a bit, the, the tra trap is that IoT is kind of a bit of a, a bit of a buzzword, a marketing term. Really, it's just an extension of what we do today, but it's using lower cost devices and knowing when to use a lower cost device. So a lower cost device that's monitoring your value, that's not mission critical, it's quite kind, it's cool to do that, right? Um, because it means you can now monitor more points and get more data than you could have gotten before to give yourself more context. Um, so I think what we're seeing is there's probably places where IoT is being used, but it's not called IoT. So I think there's probably more uptake than we expect. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, the customers, what th their focus is, you know, either reduce cost, improve quality, improve productivity, and they're not really focused on the technology in itself, but in the solution that comes from that technology. And they may not know that they're using IoT, or but they may be and they will become more comfortable with it as the years come by, as, as we've seen it, for example, with the cloud. And no, no difference in that sense. And we're starting to recognize and see that these customers are adding them as additional systems. I know that when I installed systems back in the day, we used to have, we put enough spares in the PLC rack so that we could expand systems. But these aren't necessarily being plugged into their existing PLC systems. They're completely independent. The systems are smart. We're not talking about things that only talk analog, analogs or digitals. Now these things are very smart and they sit stand alone so that they do not need some other component to, to bring everything in together. They don't need a DCS or a PLC or an RTU to bring it all together. They can stand alone independently and speak to other systems. I think what's really exciting with it is you've got applications that previously weren't cost effective to automate, right? Because the, the data was too distributed. You couldn't afford to run cables to pick this stuff up, right? So what's really exciting now is you can just Velcro on a little edge device, right? And start collecting data. And, and that's something that's now going to feed into an automation system. That's what's exciting, right? That's where we're going to see more data because people are going to realize that more things can be automated and they can get more consistency and more contact. Yeah, because with wireless technologies and uh, long-term power and batteries that last 10 years and things being able to talk over long ranges, now the cost to add something incrementally has just gone through the floor. I mean, yeah. it's, really, it's really dropped significantly. Yeah. And it opens the opportunity to solutions that didn't exist before. Traffic management, smart cities, all those things that were really virtually impossible before now become very, very simple to integrate because of what uh, you mentioned is that those low power units that can be placed anywhere, they don't cost much. You know, they're disposable. You can just change it when it dies. So all those things add to the capabilities of, of building all, the, all this information together. And they were possible before because of price. We yeah. technically could have done those things, yeah. but it would have cost us such a ridiculous yeah. point that no one could have justified it. Right. Now it's getting to a point where the price point is small and people can justify it. Hey, I want to monitor that street light. You know, no one would have ever thought to do that because of cost before. Yeah, and I think the, where the excitement comes there is that that lowers the barrier to try something. Right. So somebody yeah. can just go and easily put a counter on a machine and start doing downtime analytics that they couldn't have done before and, and suddenly, wow, you mean we were losing money there? And you didn't know it, right? But you didn't know to have the justification to put the device there in the first place because you had this barrier to entry, which was cost. Yeah, and, and from, for example, from our, both our strategy perspectives, it's interesting that uh, I would provide the connectivity layer to bring data to the device, but with your strategy, we can actually do much more than that. In other words, if that device out in the field needs to change, we can do that too, which is very interesting part where we actually tackle the solutions from both ends for, for the um, benefit in the middle. At the end of the day, uh, customers will leverage a technology to benefit their needs. Uh, they will want to either improve quality, reduce costs, improve efficiency, improve productivity. So they will leverage the technology that is available. As the Internet of Things becomes more popular, it will become easy and more available. Devices are going to become more readily available that would, did not exist before. Right? In other words, uh, wireless pressure sensors, temperature sensors, analog meters, that now can be placed out in the field, did not exist before. The farming industry it's exploding with this, with this, for example, because now it's very easy for them to put things in the field, weather sensors that let it know if they need to turn on their irrigation systems and for how long, which before they couldn't do it. They couldn't predict that information because it was not readily available. So it is changing the way people interact with the systems, 
because of the availability of information and devices. And technically it's even changing what the systems are, right? I yeah. mean, because now, now you can have a HMI in the farm, right? right? So now you've seen HMIs in places where we wouldn't have seen HMIs before. And you're absolutely going to start seeing more and more blurring of what, what is called operational technology and what's called information technology or IT and OT. Yeah. The IT and OT convergence will be driven by these types of things because not everything's going to be operational. You'll do a lot of these things because you're trying to trap information, not because you're trying to control a piece of equipment and things so that those lines are going to continue to blur more and more.